today. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Hi, welcome to the series of Foreigners in Bulgaria. Uh, today I think we're filming the fourth episode with Giovanni Meyer here. Yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Uh, Foreigners in Bulgaria are a series where I, Svetla, I'm interviewing uh, obviously expats that live in Bulgaria. So today we're going to focus on Giovanni's business journey and uh, also maybe a sneak peek into his mindset maybe and uh, we're gonna end it with a game so stay tuned for the rest of the, the episode. Giovanni, um, can you actually tell us what you do at the moment? Yeah, I own a business for SAO Consulting, mm -hmm. specialized on financial companies and everything around it, websites, SEO, web development, also social media ads, so everything on the marketing related. Yes. I founded two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. like, but started very small and it grew quite quick and since this I'm really on it, working okay. with clients for myself. Okay, mm -hmm. actually you started at a very young age to do these kinds of stuff, right? Like coding? Indeed. Stuff, right? I started when I was 14 mm -hmm. years young. I created my first websites mm -hmm. and had my first computer, so I started with coding and building small sites, small projects, and that's how it, how it developed after a while. I got a hobby, and from a hobby it went to, I went specialized in high school on this afterwards, mm -hmm. working with this, so. Yeah, so you were telling me how, let's say, kids were playing, let's say, football on yeah, the side, and you were more... True, I just skipped the, the summer vacation part. I just spent my days in my private room and just developed things, explored new things in the World Wide Web. <laughs> that yeah. was my hobby, my world. Yes. yes. And for example, for you said to me that you built it a uh, chat room, oh, yeah. is that correct? Yeah, I built it yeah. a virtual chat world. Um, it was a clone, um, some people know it, maybe Habbo. It was a very, very famous chat world back in the days. We cloned it, uh, we just copied the idea uh -huh. as kids and created a parallel world to this idea. Um, it was more some friends of mine and mm -hmm. we made money with it actually in a very young age. And um, it was also fun because you could mm -hmm. socialize with people virtually in a virtual yeah. world, mm -hmm. like now in Meta. Mm -hmm. Aha, uh -huh. so, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 okay. So it was our first thing, yeah. Like after you went into coding, you started to be a web developer, web yes. designer. Yeah, I mean, full stack it's called. It's mm -hmm. when you specialize on front and back end. So you mean you really just do everything what's completely around web design and web development. and Yeah. And so it's called a full stack, so you're able to do just everything. Yes, that's True. very nice. Yeah. And uh, can you dwell into a little bit um, <coughs> about the process of switching from freelancer to a business owner? When did you actually set to yourself, oh, now I can be a businessman and I can start my business? The change was mostly that I, yeah, I was like going to a foreign country and then knowing, okay, I make a big step and. This step also involves moving, involves um, career-wise, mm -hmm. new people. So this was the main reason actually to just say, it, okay, let's do the next level. Mm -hmm. I wanted to um, be stable, just have my own really thing, like mm -hmm. something stable, like a normal job, let's say, and also give the opportunity um, to other people to have jobs yeah. and just be in a team. Mm -hmm. you know? You said stable, but uh, let's say other people would be like, oh, that's a very big risk, right? Because mm -hmm. you're taking a very big responsibility, you're paying your own taxes and mm -hmm. you're giving other people's jobs. So it's interesting how you look at it as a stability and others yeah. will look at it as something yeah. risky. Yeah, we, at the, in the beginning, we're always scared of certain things when they knew, you know, but um, after a mm -hmm. while, when you get, when you know what you do and when you fail before and learn of your failures, then you know mm -hmm. how to do it. and. At this point, I wasn't scared anymore. No, I just knew what what's the plan. I had yeah. a good strategy. I had a good business plan, and mm -hmm. it's worked out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you keep um, mentally stable? Because you're also dealing with great uh, great amounts of money, right? Mm -hmm. So, are are you afraid of crises like this, like like the pandemic or the right now Ukraine Russian? Um, depends on the crisis. kind of crisis. Um, on the pandemic, definitely not, because it was mm -hmm. a crisis. 
prices for offline businesses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the current um, crisis let's call it like this um, also not I mean like of course it can affect the business somehow but it probably more affects your private life depends how this extends in your lobs or, or yes. else, but um, if you I mean if you long time into business you know where to invest you know where to put your money and you have a lot I mean at least as I know it from other um, business people, you you network a lot, so you get a lot of information so where mm -hmm. where to um, take care and where to watch the market, where not so no actually. Yeah, what would you just recommend to people to do for, with their money? Just a fool has his money on the bank line, because there's inflation in general. So mm -hmm. after a while, you just lose money if you have it on a normal bank line. Maybe you can invest in, in real estate like stocks or crypto. Yes. You even can go into art. NFTs. There's so yeah. many different things you can do, but um, you should never have it on your uh, laying on your house bank yeah. because it's just like burning your money. Which is your favorite actually favorite thing to invest? Um, I invest actually in in, in other people. Um, what we do, we invest in new ideas. We invest mm -hmm. in our own services. Yes. Um, for example, if we we had a new year now and we invested mm -hmm. fifteen thousand euro in a marketing campaign, and the return of invest was just we made like ten times more. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment I'm still it's like surfing around investing in my own company. Yes, yes. And of course, still having in my mind that I need to save money, but um, yeah, I have different sources and channels where I can put it in. Yeah, yeah. this is very logical. Yeah, to put it in your yes, business. Of course. Obviously, yes. If you don't do it, then you don't trust yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, watches, for example, if you buy like a Rolex watch or something, yeah. it's it never loses. Like it stays. It maybe gets even more work worth more you know okay that's interesting like an actual yeah product. because that's why people buy very expensive watches like a rolex for fifty thousand euro mm -hmm. i mean of course they want to wear them but if you keep it in your safe in the next 20 years it's worth the same and you can sell it so easy uh -huh, okay mm -hmm. yes yeah, so that's also a good yeah. thing a watch or depends yes. depends on the amount of money you want to yeah make. actually since you're a business owner you have an office as well you work probably a lot of hours you have to be there does your work interfere into your personal life <laughs> let's say yes it does definitely i mean it does and it did mm -hmm. <laughs> so both i mean i also had failed relationships because of this um but my focus is on work and um, i try to communicate mm -hmm. it too but it really does you need to know how to balance it because you work as you said like you work a lot of hours because you have no fixed times anymore you then you yeah. just do you need yeah. to push your business so you end up with mostly i end up with 14 hours daily mm -hmm. um every day except today because i have the time of you so that's quite a break for me mm -hmm. but um goal is i mean not to run my business until i'm 65 the goal is to run yes. my business until i'm 32 33 and then mm -hmm. i have uh, enough people hired in teams that i just perfectionize the process of automations and then i just like really relax more and kind of focus on the yes. grown-up stuff and love life. Um, what would you say to um, people that actually want to start up their business, someone that uh, has a is passionate about their craft skills and mm. would like to start up? So I would tell them, do it definitely, even mm -hmm. if you're afraid of failing, failing is part of the process, try it again, try yeah. it again, that's how it is. But be sure that um, you definitely have the skill set to do it. Yes. Because I saw a lot of people open business, but not knowing what they're doing, or they don't even have just scamming people, you know, and it's a very <laughs> bad thing, charging money for something you you don't master. Yes, and maybe to have a specific amount of money to put into it, yeah. right? Or depends, depends, depends what kind of business you do. For some businesses, you don't need money. Mm -hmm. um, when I started doing my first website, I also had no money for it. I mean, mm -hmm. I charged money for it. But yeah, you need definitely, um, depends in which direction you go, you need proof. Um, you need social proof means you need always testimonials, reviews. Yes, okay. And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what I gathered over here. So start small. Find yeah. some small clients, go to some shop. Whatever you do depends on the kind of business. Yeah. But um, you need proof because people who want to pay money for your services, they want proof. Yes. I mean, I would, I, for example, if we, we close a deal for 70,000 euro, the company doesn't close the deal before they see that we actually can do the work yeah yeah of so, course <laughs> yes yeah, so that's yeah. important yes okay uh, a few skills or qualities that a business person needs to have yeah you should have 
definitely communication skills. You should be, um, yeah, consistency. Then you should have a good, healthy ego. Without this, mm -hmm. healthy, uh, okay. yes, a healthy ego, mm -hmm. but also very strong. And you should um, be able to control your emotions. Yeah, this is very good. Yes. This is a very good one. But fifth the, one. The fifth one, they're responsible for mm -hmm. sure. Of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean. And uh, can you tell us now, actually, the story behind you coming to Bulgaria? And choosing to base your business here? I decided very spontaneously. I mean, I raised in Germany mm -hmm. and I moved on a certain point to Mercedes because I worked there as a, as a tech nerd, like as a software engineer. And um, I had a burnout after a while. So I left to Venezuela mm -hmm. to just spend time with my family, relax and just find myself and clear my mind, my thoughts. And after this, I just we were looking for a good destination to go where I could start a new journey and also yes. with the mind, okay, business wise. Mm -hmm. And then I heard from friends and from other people that Bulgaria is a very beautiful country, a lot of nature. You and actually had to do an interview and then there was no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so basically, yeah, yeah. you applied for a, like a job here. Back at this time, we had like a big ass blackout. It was everyone the television mm -hmm. it was march 219 mm -hmm. and since the blackout happened there was like electricity outages like uh -huh. on a daily base mm -hmm. so and we lived in a very very small village and i needed to apply for a job and then when i had finally a mm -hmm. appointment for interview first of all the time difference is minus seven hours mm -hmm. it was very early like six in the morning and they also it was very hot and i needed to look fancy because they turned on the camera yeah. And so I walked really, took a bus and walked. So it was like one hour just walking, traveling to this public, to the public school to catch the Wi Fi. Oh my God. And then having the interview, looking all sweaty. And, <laughs> and they asking me where I am because it was very really loud in the background <laughs> and my face was all sweaty. Mm -hmm. So we had that interview. And then afterwards, they told me, okay, we need to do a second round. I was like, damn, good Lord. And the next week, then again, the same. <laughs> okay, you look at a problem to catch me on the phone. and. So it was quite, I'm um, not sure if I'm still alive or if I'm still coming and I'm accepting this job. Um, but at the end it worked out, but it was um, a very, very hard process to just really finish the whole um, application process yeah. with the company. So it's always possible to find a job. Yes, yes. So there's no excuses basically. <laughs> yeah. I remember you were saying how you're gonna go travel again and mm. go somewhere else, but you stayed here. Mm. Like, why? Something this catch me that just made me feel home you know and um, we were as when we were young we were moving a lot and um, this, I found my home somehow here mm -hmm. also I had good times here and a lot of beautiful women that's amazing <laughs> and also you can travel in the country very nice and then when it came to the point that I decided to also open a business it was stressful and time consuming so we just focused on being here, not traveling too much, just having my whole focus on my mission, you know, so that was the reason I stayed and I will stay. <laughs> okay, so the benefit, let's say, of uh, having, um, starting up and obviously running a business here, you said, so the, the taxes, right? Mm. Anything else? Uh, yeah, definitely the, the living costs. Um, mm -hmm. means also utility bills so if i as you know i have our own office yes and i'm planning now to open a second office so it's quite cheap here and same also when you hire people because like sofia and bulgaria is very famous for web devs and software engineers you can find them quite cheap here compared to switzerland or germany it's so interesting about the office because um that's the proof how like i feel humans are godlike because You've had like an idea in your mind and now it's materialized. You mm -hmm. know, you can actually go into the office and it's like, and before that it was in your head. I don't know, I, found, mm -hmm. I find this magical. So. It, is, it is, I definitely agree because it's something when you have a, something in your mind, a vision, idea, a dream, and you can really like, mm -hmm. like reach this goal and feel it and see it. It's, it's powerful, yeah. yes. it changes your mindset, it changes you actually, it makes you way stronger, happier, healthier actually. Yeah. Yes, how do you feel here just as a, as a person? In Bulgaria in general mm -hmm. I feel very welcomed and yes. it's very, the 
people are quite warm. Depends on where you go, of course, yeah. in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. But in generally, I I like it because mm -hmm. if you compare to Germany or to Austria, the people are different. They're cold and not yes. that socializing, and everybody's for himself. But over here, it's a bit different. Yeah. Ha! Huh, so see, because a lot of people are saying, "Oh, Bulgarians are very cold." No. It's not true. We're, no. we're so, warm. So specialized. It's, it's more specific. I think it's more the Sofia city where the people are a bit colder. Yes, yes, because yes. Because it's the capital city, it's yeah. a big city. But mm -hmm. if you go to Plovde, Veliko, wherever, Thermal, and, yes, yes, they way, way warm and more welcome. Yes. Have you ever felt a different behavior towards you because you're a foreigner or because of your appearance, mm -hmm. the language you're using, for example? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when I was new, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was more at the metro, more the make sure security officers because uh -huh. yeah because they like to check my id they, but, they check your id in the metro uh, always always really yeah but it's oh my god yeah, never yeah. happened to wow when yeah. i came straight from the school i also was very dark because i was six months in uh -huh. the school so uh -huh. it was and i still was like in a bad shape with my hair and with this situation that was going on there but now in the last two years nothing mm -hmm. nothing and the people i eat actually very often they come up to me and ask me where i'm from because uh -huh. it's it's hard to guess where I'm from. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah. so they always, and soon as you say Venezuela, and then you have really a whole talk, and it's very yeah. interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to ask you this. If uh, I give you right now a magical wand, what would you uh, change in Bulgaria? I would get rid of the corrupt people, the mm -hmm. because I would do the same for Venezuela. They have the same problem. So yes. I would do the same here, yes. Oh. And, and more hair to the people. And what? Sorry? Hair. Hair. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> oh, yes, I understand. That's a very uh, weak spot mm -hmm. about uh, men here. <laughs> uh, and do you have uh, actually a favorite place here in Bulgaria? I think it's it's Plovdiv. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I go there so often. I mm -hmm. love to see the vibe. Mm -hmm. I like this city. <laughs> yeah, <yes. laughs> yeah, I love it. Do you have a favorite Bulgarian word? I like. I like, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I like means like just uh, being like uh, relaxing and just like doing nothing and mm. yeah, that kind of thing. That's fun. Can I ask you as a, as a guy, what would you think about um, women here in Bulgaria? Yeah, I mean, there is two types. Of course, there are also other types, but <laughs> <laughs> Before I get here stoned. <laughs> it's uh, fine, you can this, there it's a safe space here. Yes, you can say whatever. Yes, um Be careful. Um, <laughs> I mean there are either the very open minded and very chill women mm -hmm. and then there's this one kind of woman, the Kiflas. So there's in my opinion yeah, two types of course. So very open minded people that who studied somewhere else and traveled a lot yeah. and came around Europe and know mostly two or three languages actually and a lot of girls here speak Spanish I figured out wow and that, yeah oh, and then there is of course the ones who just focus on materialistic things and yes. just plastic and money and mm. yes I met both of them yes um, both nice experience I mean, <laughs> yes. you need to, you need to. but in, yes. in general very very beautiful woman um, also very very like temperamental woman, like they have a strong uh -huh. temper yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and mm, very smart actually to be honest a lot of oh. women are very smart here yeah. okay yes. oh that's very nice of you mm -hmm. nice. um to finish off we're gonna um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna end up the, the interview with, with a game it's an association game basically mm -hmm. i tell you one word and you say the first word that comes to your mind Basically. Yeah. So I'm gonna say just blue. Plants. Okay. <laughs> I would say ocean, but wow. The different <laughs> mindsets of people. Yeah. Uh, laptop. Work. Business. Success. Uh, business owner. Me. Ooh, okay. Giovanni. My. <laughs> <laughs> Latino. Yeah, you know, Latino is a word for itself, it has power. Ooh, Ooh. okay. Uh, charming. Okay. <laughs> uh, success. Yeah, Latino. Oh. <laughs> okay, masculine. Masculine. 
this episode stay tuned for the next one and um yeah thank you thank, thank you. you for being here um and see you soon bye okay